Hi everyone. Welcome to another video by Jigta. I'm Rajdeep and today we'll be looking at a problem from the CML BSC entrance. Uh and it's a very different kind of problem than what is expected at this level. It's a very non-routine puzzle like problem. There's no real theorems or results here. It's just a very clever way of thinking of approaching a problem. Uh it's a very fun problem. So I hope you enjoy seeing it. Uh it's it's a great way of approaching mathematics with which is without appealing to a particular result or a uh a theorem but instead of just instead of just approaching it like a puzzle like how all math problems should be approached. So let's get into it. So this problem is you know as usual from the CMI BSC entrance of 2018 and it's problem B6 the subjective sixth problem the last one of that year it says that you imagine the unit square in the plane to be a carom board assume the striker is just a point moving with no friction and that when it hits an edge the angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence so it moves like a light beam when it hits another edge it bounces again similarly and so on If the striker ever hits a corner, it falls into the pocket and disappears, like a real game of carrom. The trajectory of the striker is completely determined by its starting point and its initial velocity. If the striker eventually returns to its initial state, which is the initial position and the initial velocity, we define its bounce number to be the number of edges it hits before returning to this initial state. For example, the trajectory of the initial state. 0.55 1 comma 0 which means that you start center 0.5 0.5 comma 0.5 and you start with the velocity of 1 comma 0 which is this way right has bounce number 2 because it goes like this bounces of this wall goes back like this bounces of this wall and only then does it come back to its initial state which is its in it which is the position and that velocity and so the bounce number is 2 because it hits this wall once and this wall once the trajectory with 0.25 comma 0.75 which is somewhere over here and 1 comma 1 which is in this direction has bounce number 4 as is evidently visible it's here it's here it's here it's here and only then does it come back and that's the setup we have let's look at the questions Suppose the striker has a initial state 0.5, comma 0.5, comma p, comma q. So you know we are starting at the center. You're starting at the center with a velocity p, comma q. Well, if p is greater than q is greater than equal to zero, what is the velocity after it hits an edge for the first time? And then what if q is greater than p, greater than equal to zero? positive velocities but p is greater than q so for p greater than q what that means is that at this point you make a small coordinate system and the velocity is determined by the point p comma q so if p is greater than q really what's happening is that the velocity vector at that point is underneath this drag that i just drew so it's something like this but it's also not negative so none of that it's in the first quadrant but under under the dag so it's something like this this corresponds to p comma q velocity p comma q with p greater than q and similarly if you know q is greater than p you would be in the first quadrant but in this house this corresponds to q greater than p okay what is the velocity after it hits an edge for the first time it's pretty simple because it won't change magnitude it only changes directions and if you know it comes as p comma q like this it will hit this vertical wall right it will go like this and it'll hit this vertical wall and that's true no matter where it is under the diagonal in the first quadrant so it hits the vertical wall when it hits the vertical wall the you know the the striker moves like this hits the vertical wall and then moves away like right so the velocity vector flips 
the sign after you know hitting the vertical wall it slips the sign of its x coordinate right it was you know p in this direction and q is in this direction and after you know hitting the wall it's p in this direction and q in this direction which means it's minus p so the answer to the source question is minus p comma q we saw here the idea that you want to separate the motion of the striker into two component parts this is something those of you are interested in physics this would come to you quite naturally but for those of you who aren't generally if you have a motion like this you can break it into two separate component motions so one along the x axis and one along the y and you can sum those vectors up right to get the actual motion but it's very helpful in this entire problem as you see and in fact that's the central idea that you break the motion of the striker into just the vertical and the horizontal components and we'll see this in you but this is already proven useful for us by saying that the you know the velocity is going to be minus p comma q if p is greater than q so by symmetry if q is greater than p the velocity will be minus will be p comma minus q minus q doesn't change only the sign flips Uh, the next question says, draw a trajectory with bounce number five, or justify why it's impossible. Think about what happens to the velocity. So, I'm already saying that the answer to this is that it's impossible. Why? The fact that the velocity only really changes by sign shifts. So, you know, after first hit, so I'm only tracking the velocity right now. That's the important part here. After first hit the velocity goes from p comma q to either minus p comma q or p comma minus q whichever the, the point being that the sign flips and then again the sign will flip right it can either be you know it has a lot of possibilities but it's conceivable that it could come back to p comma q because there has been an even number of hits if there was an odd number of hits there would be an odd number of sign changes which means at least one of the velocity ve vector coordinates will be negative of what it started with and so it can't come back to its initial state so odd bounce numbers are not possible number of sign changes come back to original state must be even right in because if you start at p comma q again it'll you can you know chain it'll chain signs if you have an even number of changes you can you can come back to p comma q. you needn't but you can but if it's an odd number of hits there's no way you could come back to p comma q okay great so that was question 1 and question 2 We've already got five marks. Consider the trajectory with the initial state x comma y, and the velocity is just a horizontal velocity. It's p comma zero. There is no vertical component to the velocity, but p is a positive integer. In how much time will the striker first return to its initial state? So let's draw it out. Let's see what it looks like. So we start at some point x comma y. Right, that's what the question says. Maybe you start at some point x comma y, but the velocity is horizontal with a positive integer velocity. This will be useful for the final part. So you start somewhere, say x comma y. Uh, your velocity is like this. So it's p comma zero. It's positive integer, so it's like this. How much time will it take to come back to this? I mean, also it's clear that it will, right? It will just go like this, hit this wall, return, go like this, and then hit this wall, and then return. So the motion is like this. This. But this Venn diagram kind of immediately gives away what the answer is. We were already told that the the you know the striker and it's evident from the laws of physics at play here and this velocities are uniform the speed does not change and so we though to find the time of travel you know we start here 
we go this whole path and we come here is just the distance covered by the speed the speed is constant it's just p right and so the distance traveled since this is a unit square is 1 plus 1 which is equal to 2 and the speed is uniform it's 2 by p so the time required is 2 by p that's it that's all there is so part 3 is also done and the answer is 2 by p final and you know the real heavy hitter question is what is the bounce number for the initial state x comma y p comma q where p and q are relatively prime positive integer assuming that the striker never hits a corner okay this is where our original you know idea of breaking the motion into two horizontal and vertical ver horizontal and vertical component parts is very useful because you know if i I'll just make a new square. You start at some point x comma y, and you have some velocity p comma q, but the velocity vector components are <clears throat> re relatively prime positive integers. So you start somewhere like this. I'll break the motion into two parts. The vertical part looks more like this, and the horizontal part. The horizontal part, so I can think of it as two different strikers, right? You can think of them as like half a striker each and the full thing as just the sum. And so at any given point, say like one second later, if the, the horizontal part of the striker is here and the vertical part of the striker is here, then I know that the original striker is actually here. But that's how we're doing this. We're breaking it up. The horizontal part is... Is just it starts at x comma y with velocity p comma zero, and the vertical part starts at x comma y at the velocity zero comma q. These are much simpler to handle than the composite motion. So you can think of the motion as somewhere something like this: that you start at this point, and the horizontal part is just bouncing back and forth. It goes here, hits the vertical wall, goes back, hits the with this vertical wall and this, and it keeps repeating this. And so does the vertical part. Hits this wall, comes back, hits this wall, goes back. And this is all that happens. The horizontal and vertical parts are very simple movements. But there's some can be weird. And there's some, it can hit here, and hit here, and hit here, and can do a bunch of stuff. But the horizontal and vertical parts are pretty simple. So they keep doing their uniform thing, and their sum is, the, is the, what the striker does. And so, the point is that in time two, two, you know, in the in whatever units are working in in time two, the horizontal component trajectory has, you know, it comes back to the initial state every 2 by p time units so in time 2 by p it'll come back to its original state once and in that process hit the walls twice and hence uh, in time 2 it has over the horizontal component has done p total trips where a trip is just like start at the point hit two walls come back that's a trip so it has been p of these because it does a one trip in time two by p so in time two it does p total trips and in these in each such trip each trip it hits the walls two p times in each uh, in each trip it hits the wall two times so in the total p trips it will hit the wall two p times the same goes for the vertical component, you know, blah, 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 in time two, total hits, two Q. So you could rush to the answer, two P plus two Q, and you would be right. In fact, that is the final answer. You have to be careful because if you think of these vertical and, you know, horizontal uh trajectories as sort of components and you add them, it's possible that at the same instant, of time, the vertical and 
uh, the vertical and the horizontal comp- uh, component trajectories have hit a wall at the same time. So then you would count them differently, right? You'd count for the striker, it counts as just one hit. But if that were to happen, then, so this is very fun, is that A, we're guaranteed that this won't happen. Because if the vertical part of the component has hit, you know, a wall, and the horizontal part has also hit a wall, it means that the striker is actually hit a corner, which we are guaranteed does not happen. This is also kind of guaranteed by the fact that P and Q are relatively prime. It's a bit of an argument, but it makes sense. And so that's why at no instant does it happen that the horizontal wall has hit, that the horizontal trajectory has hit a wall and the vertical trajectory has hit a wall. They always happen separately. When the vertical trajectory hits this wall at this instant, the horizontal trajectory is somewhere over here. Like it's not hitting a wall. And so because of that, the total number of hits is the sum of the individual hits in the horizontal, the vertical trajectory. So it's 2p plus 2q. And that's the final answer. So that is all for this problem. It's a very fun problem. Uh, it uses no real theory as such, only common sense. And this very nascent and important idea that you just you have some sort of motion that you're trying to measure. You break it into its component part. Something, as I said, physics students would probably have some experience with, but even if you're not, it's a natural, nice idea. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thank you very much.